not only uh, are the letters glued to the board, but the letters themselves are just made of flakes of wood that are glued together. It's a board called OSB, or Orientated Strand Board. And even the chipboard uh, is just made of chips of wood glued together again. But glues can also be very, very, very frustrating. It's easy to come unstuck. So this video is a sort of brief introduction to glues, but uh, more it's about my own personal experience uh, of the glues that uh, I've had some success with uh, and that I use on my machines. If you want to skip to a particular chapter, um, here are the contents. So the earliest known glue is a form of pitch that was used for gluing axe heads onto the shafts uh, used in Stone Age times. Um, then uh, animal hide glues uh, made of boiling up uh, fish scales or rabbit skin or uh, any sort of hide really. Um, they were used in ancient times and are still made today. Um, then there are plant-based glues like uh, uh, flour and water paste makes a glue or wallpaper paste is sort of starch based glue but the natural glues most widely used today are ones based on latex rubber. For gluing cloth to cloth there's a very good glue, a simple one called copy decks. It's uh, literally just latex with uh, a small amount of ammonia into make it last longer. Latex rubber. It provides a unique opportunity to discipline the reckless bankers. Um, so some time ago I made a machine called Whacker Banker and uh, the first hammers I tried only lasted a week or two. Um, so then I thought well I better buy ones. Uh, so these are ones made for whacker mole machines and they're solidly made uh, with all the bolts and stuff around uh, uh, the base there. It's actually layers of um, sort of polyurethane foam but very very dense foam. Anyway these were absolutely hopeless. They lasted very little longer than mine, less than two weeks. So uh, gradually I evolved a design that uh, did manage to work. Uh, this is what mine ended up looking like. Uh, I start off uh, as a bit of thick dowel. Um, I put a bit of uh, big heat shrink over them to stop the wood just disintegrating. Um, I then stick some dowel in the middle of it with uh, PVA. And then I just use old blankets I found were much better than foam. So old woolen blankets and I just wrap them uh, round and round and round and round uh, to bring it up to the um, diameter that I need um, so it gets as fat as that. And then I just have strips of uh, thick canvas that I glue the edges with copy decks. Uh, and then wrap them round and glue it to a round patches on the top and on the bottom uh, and then I'll do a second layer and I, sometimes a third layer as well and so that's what they end up looking at with the uh, glued seams. Well these hammers last about nine months on Wacker Banker. After nine months they look a bit like this um, there's absolutely nothing left inside. The old blankets have completely disintegrated and I think also the, the, that lump of wood on the end has, has just come off, um, come unglued. Uh, but uh, the extraordinary thing is that if you look at the copy decks joints on the canvas, uh, they're completely intact. Pretty remarkable. It's good stuff. So besides all the natural glues, uh, then a load of synthetic ones were invented mostly in the middle of the 20th century uh, and mostly by German chemists. 
So uh, PVA, 1924, polyurethanes, 1937, epoxy in 1934, superglue, 1942, and methacrylates as Loctite stuff in 1953. So there are a lot of different glues. Well, when planning this video, I realized I, I was finding it frustrating. I didn't really have a good understanding of what a, makes a glue. Uh, so I started uh, trying to research it, uh, but it's not easy. Um, there's lots of rather simple-minded, condescending stuff for kids that's not very useful. And the other end of the spectrum, there's lots of abstruse academic stuff about uh, polymerization or the physics of bonding. Um, and they didn't answer the sort of questions I wanted about like, why does wood glue so successfully? Or why does polyurethane foam up as it sets? Or why does super glue often fail after a while? Um, I couldn't answer any of those questions satisfactorily. Uh, I did find a, a basic idea of, of what constitutes a glue that's slightly helpful. Glues have to have two properties, basic properties. Um, the first is that they have to stick to the surfaces. Uh, sounds completely obvious, but they have to form very intimate contact. So they have to sort of wet the surface. Um, so if you, at the other end of the spectrum, if you put a bit of glue on Teflon or polythene, it'll form droplets and, and won't spread. Uh, they're particularly difficult materials to glue. So once it can make good contact, then it can stick to the material uh, either by mechanically interlocking or by a range of weak intermolecular forces between the glue and the material uh, or by sometimes by chemical reaction with the material. So that's the first thing, it has to stick to the material. Uh, the second thing is that the glue has then got to set, to harden, so you can't just be pulled apart again. And of course it does this by cooling down with hot glue or by the evaporation of a solvent or water or uh, by a chemical reaction forming uh, a polymer like polyurethane or polyvinyl alcohol, PVA. But actually there's such a huge variety of glues and such a huge variety of materials to stick. Uh, I think these general principles are only uh, limited use. Um, and for the rest of this video, I'm going to stick with individual glues and materials that uh, I have experience of myself. Wood is one of the easiest materials to glue. I mainly use a, a waterproof PVA. Um, Tight Bond do one too, uh, just a different brand. You just apply it to one surface. and uh, put the other one on top and that squiddlished around a bit and then uh, I usually either put a screw through to clamp it or you can put a weight on uh, or you can uh, use a, a clamp with bigger things a clamp is usually a bit easier the other thing is that um, quite often when you clamp it up it, it, it sort of strays a bit and so then tapping it with a hammer uh, can get the joint, uh, whoops, <laughs> that's what I meant, um, yeah, that's pretty good. So some of my friends uh, actually don't bother with clamps, they just hold the bits of wood together. Um, this is perfectly possible, uh, but you need a bit of patience, because if you let go and it comes unstuck, then somehow it doesn't want to do it so well the second time. Uh, you can also buy um, special tacky PVAs uh, that, that tack a bit quicker, uh, and then it doesn't take too long. I hope this won't go on too long. I'll just have to uh, see how long I need to hold my, my hands here. Till it. Do you 
nine sixty. Okay. Yeah, they're sort of pretty well, well enough held. Well, the uh, waterproof PVA is significantly different from just ordinary school glue. Um, chemically, there's more cross-linking that goes on in the molecules, and whereas the school glue dries white, um, the waterproof stuff uh, dries uh, completely clear. I did this joint yesterday. Um, it's amazingly strong. Well, but you can see it's actually uh, broken into the wood as much as through the glue. So the chiropodist, her body is actually mainly PVA. Uh, it's just layers of paper, about six layers of paper uh, and dilute PVA, a sort of papier mache uh, on a chicken wire frame that you can just see in, in her upper arm. And actually her hands and her face are also papier mache. Uh, they're made of tissue paper and uh, copy decks. So uh, you can probably see the old newspaper inside. The polyurethane glue I use is a cartridge glue. Um, it claims to dry in five minutes, claims to be extra fast setting. I find it's more like 20 minutes, but it's still useful that it uh, uh, dries so quickly. Though the actual reason why I prefer this one is because um, it lasts a lot longer. You could, it lasts for two or three years. Uh, polyurethane glue sets by moisture. so. If you buy a pot of it and you use a bit, then some moisture from the air gets inside the pot. Um, and that's enough to set the whole lot in less than a year. Um, and for people like me who don't use a lot of it, uh, I'm always throw, used to throw it away. But this is much better. Anyway, uh, using polyurethane glue. Well, um, first thing to about it is that it's very, very messy. And not a great one for wearing gloves, but uh, this is an exception. If you do get it on your fingers, it just, there's nothing, no solvent will get it off. The only way is to use pumice stone and rub for hours and hours and hours. Um, so, uh, and I do keep, try and keep the top on uh, fairly carefully, again, to keep, uh, keep the air out, the moisture out rather, and air out. So I can, would normally use it just like PVA, uh, joining a joint together. Um, but it, it, you could also use it, or it's supposed to be able to use it for um, butt joining plywood, um, which I do find quite useful. Whoops, there it goes, it's coming out now. Um, it won't be incredibly strong, but I find it useful uh, when I'm developing a machine sometimes just to be able to add, change the shape of a casing uh, by um, gluing it together. Now, uh, I'm just going to put two weights on here. You do have to clamp this stuff um, because the glue foams up. So it's starting to foam up now. Um, the foam is actually, the, the, the gas is CO2. Uh, as chemical reaction goes on, the, in the pot the glue is a mix of isocyanates and polyols, uh, whatever they are, um, and the reaction involving releasing the CO2 produces the polyurethane that is the set glue. You can actually see one or two bubbles appearing now. So another thing about the foaming is that I used to think that this glue was rather good at uh, gluing things that didn't uh, meet perfectly, that the glue was good at gap filling. But uh, actually, uh, the foam itself is very, very weak. So it's not at all good at gap filling. 
this, this doesn't fit very well. So I'll, I'll do this joint and uh, once it's set um, I'll see how much force, show how much force or lack of force it takes to uh, break it again. Right, join this up, squish the glue in and uh, put the weights on here now. Those PU glue's fully gone off now. Um, so now this one was the one where it fitted tightly and this one is the one where it wasn't so well fitting. So in theory, if I bash this with a hammer, it should be that one that'll break. <laughs> Maybe not such a good uh, impressive demonstration. Though I do think the force of the foaming up probably pushes the glue into all the sort of nooks and crannies and probably does help increase its strength. Gluing wood to other materials. Um, well, surprisingly, I read that uh, polyurethane wood glue would glue to other things as well. So I just tried it. I haven't actually used this on any of my machines. Um, as far as I can see, it's sticking really, really well. So I'll just sort of do a bit of destructive testing and see if it, uh, I can get it to come unstuck. Uh, maybe, maybe by peeling it off. Peel strength of glue is usually weaker. No. <laughs> Finally went, but uh, took a, took quite a bit of the wood with it too. So uh, that's, that's uh, very impressive. Something I didn't know about before. There's another family of polyurethane based glues. Uh, that I call Sikaflex. Uh, that's a manufacturer. I think they were the original one. Uh, the glue is cartridge glue. is developed for sticking Carl windscreens to the bodywork, um, but it will actually stick almost anything to anything. Uh, it, it's the the final joint when it's set. It's still elastic and sticky, um, and I sometimes use it for fixing motor mounts so uh, to reduce vibration uh, and noise. More recently uh, there have been just a such a bewildering variety of different glues like this. Uh, I've rather lost track. Uh, some of them may be better but it's hard to tell from the packaging. They all say they're amazing uh, so I've no idea really. Uh, the one uh, trick tip I would give is that it's worth having a, a, a fairly good quality gun. Um, they work so much better than the, the cheap skinny ones um, which can jam up and start being very exhausting to use. Super glue was a wonder of the 1950s, claimed to stick almost anything. Though I'm not sure I would want to fly in a plane that was stuck together with it. I'm not usually a fan of super glue, um, but oddly there's this variety um, that's sold as mitre glue for gluing wood with uh, an activator as well. Um, <clears throat> and uh, this surprisingly works very well. Uh, I don't, don't use it structurally on things I make, but uh, for little carvings um, I find it really good. So like on tool ton school run, um, all the little scenes, uh, they're actually made out of a wood called gelatin. And uh, very often I won't carve a whole figure, um, so I've just done the body here. Uh, and then I want to add uh, a head and the arms, oh and feet on this one. Um, so what I do is I just sand uh, the mating surfaces flat on a disc sander uh, and then glue them with the uh, super glue. I'll just go and, and sand these two. You 
put the super glue on one surface and uh, you spray the activator on the other one and then you plop them together You've got about 10 seconds to hold them. Yeah, so that's got a head and uh, that will actually be pretty well stuck now. Um, so now I can carry on carving and get the head right. I'll um, go into more detail about carving in a, in a forthcoming episode. Um, but you can see how useful super glue is. Um, and it particularly because it means, gives me greater freedom. I can choose what sort of jaunty angle to uh, fit the next limb on uh, and change my mind as I go along. Uh, if you carve it all out of a single block, you're rather more stuck with the original design. Hot glue. I don't use a lot of hot glue, uh, but I do find it useful for um, making rough prototypes uh, to get a feel of something um, that I'm making. Um, uh, I guess my one insight, if you like, into uh, um, hot glues is that the uh, the ordinary glue sticks you buy, these clear ones, or equally the coloured ones, uh, are just not very good. They're not very sticky uh, and they don't go really liquidy, so they don't seep into the joints. Um, but you can get, for not, no more money, um, a sort of a slightly more industrial one that's just called a multi-purpose glue gun. Uh, and I find these a lot, lot better. Since then I've discovered that there are actually lots of other hot glues for specialist purposes um, that you can find on the web. I think glue guns generally work better for um, materials that don't conduct heat well because the gl glue needs to stay fairly liquid to seep into the joint to make a good contact. Um, completely hidden myself now but you can see it's good for building things quickly uh, contact glues I use them a lot for gluing plywood to a uh, laminate sheet um, the outside of my arcane machines are mostly made of this stuff um, is wonderfully hard wearing and also easy to uh, clean um, so I, it's not totally straightforward uh, putting it on to uh, the wood so I thought I'd give you a demonstration with a couple of bits of uh, scrap so um, first you have to cut, cut the laminate to size uh, and it's easy with this I don't even really need to cut it I'm not going to use it for anything else but uh, if you've got a large sheet it's quite an unwieldy thing and you don't want to waste it um, so uh, I usually cut it about, leave about half an inch all the way around. Um, and then to cut it, uh, I sometimes for smaller bits I use my uh, sheet metal guillotine. Um, but I also find uh, uh, an angle grinder works well uh, with a fine disc in it. And so on. Cut to size. Um, so the next thing is to uh, spread uh, the glue. Um, in the past uh, contact glues were always um, solvent based. Uh, they're basically sort of latex 
based but uh, the solvent was very very smelly and um, on a large area it was a horrible thing to use uh, but uh, you don't need to use that anymore there's this nice um, water-based variety uh, that I find works very well it isn't half sticky though Uh, you just brush it onto both the surfaces. Uh, perhaps I'll turn this one upside down and do it on here first. Um, <clears throat> uh, I'm using a rather small brush, you can do it with a roller as well, um, only because it's important not to use a nice brush because uh, it, it's impossible to get this stuff off the brush once you've used it. Um, well, it would if I did it. Re if I could try to get it off now, it'd probably be all right. But in a couple of minutes, um, it forms a sort of gloopy, rubbery stuff that just won't come off. So uh, basically, you have to write off the brush or the roller. Actually, rollers are better for large, large areas than a brush. But you don't want anywhere to be too thick because then it will take longer to uh, go off. So uh, the one drawback of this water-based stuff is that it um, it doesn't like uh, drying at low temperatures. I'm not sure if it's warm enough in my workshop this today uh, to go off. So I'll probably have to take it indoors for half an hour. Uh, it needs to get to a stage where it hardly feels sticky at all before you put the two bits together. Okay, pause for half an hour. Okay, it's now gone off. Um, so uh, that's gone completely clear and this goes this darker green colour. So it's quite simple to stick them together on a small sheet like this, but if you've got a big sheet and you've only cut it, uh, the laminate half an inch larger, uh, you need to line them accurately because once they've touched, you can't move them. They're completely stuck. So I usually get them the plywood flat and put some battens on it. Um, I can then get the lay the laminate on top and just get a feel of uh, yeah I think that's about right and then you can just remove the battens one at a time but that's really it. It's, it, it probably won't move at all but even just that amount That's all right, I've done that all right. It's fitted. Um, so now uh, the final stage is to go round it with a mallet. Um, because uh, it actually sticks by pressure uh, contact glue. Um, the, it goes through some form of crystallization, the latex. Uh, I don't understand it, but uh, that's how it works. And certainly if you hammer it down, uh, it makes a really good bond. Of course, to finish off, you just uh, have to run a router um, around the uh, laminate to, uh, with a trimming blade, um, trimming cutter uh, to finish it off. Uh, well, this is a bit of a performance for small areas. Um, so you can also get uh, aerosol uh, contact glue. Um, I, I do use this occasionally. Um, uh, this is solvent based, uh, so I use it out of doors, upwind. It's quite smelly and I'm sure it's pretty nasty stuff. When I was a kid, I used to think that epoxy glue was a miracle of modern science. Uh, I'm now a bit more jaundiced about it. But it remains widely used industrially uh, and it's still one of the best glues for gluing metals. Um, not that I often glue metals. Um, 
and to two pack glue um, you mix equal quantities uh, I usually warm it up before um, uh, mixing them makes it easier to get out of the tube and also easy to mix uh, I thought I'd demonstrate it uh, joining a bit of aluminium to a bit of steel as it's supposed to be good at that not that I use it for that much myself um, so yeah you just mix the glue up uh, you have to clean the metal first as well um, and uh, once it's fully mixed and you squidge it on and uh, clamp the two bits of metal together. Uh, it claims to dry in five minutes but uh, I think it's more like half an hour and really I tend to leave it for a day before I really trust it. Um, if you're gluing larger quantities uh, you can get a gun um, and you which takes these these nozzles um, I use them for putting together the badges we sell at novelty automation as the glue goes down the spiral flutes of the tube uh, the two parts gradually mix in with each other Uh, the disadvantage of this of course is that uh, every time you finish a job you have to throw away uh, the nozzle and all the glue that's in it so unless you're doing quite a lot it's a bit wasteful welcome to the booth of truth home of the psychofluorescent radio mirror put your hand in the slot now as you gaze into the radio mirror open your mind and feel its tranquil balls resonate with your entire body. So uh, inside the slot there are these balls um, and for some reason or other people just really want to um, pull them out. I guess it's like a sort of souvenir or something. Um, at first I screwed them in uh, but I lost a few that way. I think people were somehow unscrewing them. So then I put a big dollop of epoxy at the base of each one. Um, but somehow, even still, uh, they came loose and I continued to lose them. I've re-glued them a couple of times now. Um, anyway, because I was uh, thinking about glue uh, and I had to bring it home for another reason, um, I decided to redesign them. So I drilled a hole in each ball and stuck a bit of dowel in with uh, PVA. So I've gone from... Um, epoxy to PVA and then of course I'm about to glue them into the plywood base uh, again with more PVA. You prefer uh, a certain amount of change and variety and become dissatisfied when, when hemmed in by restrictions and limitations. Loctite, another classic glue for metal uh, I get on quite well with this. Um, the uh, traditional use of this is for um, stopping nuts coming undone. So uh, you apply it to a thread and then it coats um, round the nut it's still possible to undo but it'd be stiff and it won't come undone just by vibration or something like that so that's been around for a long time but actually Loctite make uh, quite a lot of different varieties and uh, I keep four different ones now there's another one 
is handy um, I find for where I've been making prototypes I don't want the threads to be locked up but uh, when they go machines go on the pier it's useful if they are this one that is a uh, wicking grade um, so that one you put in after you've done up the bolt and it just seeps in <laughs> put on rather too much there um, then there's uh, a gloopier one um, called bearing fit 638 um, so that's you you push this put this round bearing housings yeah so once you've got it all the way around the housing uh, you can then slip a bearing in and it it so then if the holes are slightly too big or um, it will also cope with adjusting to cope with a bit of misalignment so you can get two bearings uh, accurately in line. And the fourth one I keep uh, is uh, a high strength Loctite uh, and this really is uh, very strong. Um, now I find it useful for joining things to tiny motors which have little two mil shafts and it's difficult to get a good clamp to a two mil shaft um, so what I quite often do is to uh, put a bit of the high strength Loctite on both and then oh, I've got it there on there you go and in half an hour that will be a very good join uh, the only drawback with this is that uh, if you later want to get it off again uh, you can damage the motor by because you have to pull it out so hard uh, though you can warm it up that's a way of softening it double-sided tape can also be surprisingly good at uh, joining bits of metal. I sometimes find myself using it to join uh, little plates of aluminium uh, and it works surprisingly well and seems to last fine, doesn't seem to come undone. Uh, of course a good area, a largish area helps of overlap. Um, that's the backing tape. You pull that off. Push them together. Now it's another pressure sensitive uh, adhesive. So uh, what I tend to do is to squish the joint uh, together in a vise. well held. Uh, as there are quite a few examples of this in my machines uh, and I've never had any trouble with it. Um, there's one other sort of uh, double-sided tape and this is a foam back tape. It's very similar. Uh, you just uh, cut a bit off. Lay it on remove the backing hardly feels sticky this stuff anymore uh, and it won't be until it's uh, squidged really sticky till it's squidged up in the vise but the advantage of this stuff is that it just allows a little bit of flexibility in a joint which uh, occasionally can be useful Surprisingly, glue is very good at fixing steel things to concrete. Um, in the past, uh, you drill a hole and then you put in an expanding bolt uh, called a rule bolt. Um, but uh, dust used to get into these things and 
the hole would wander. It's difficult to get them in the right place. And you never knew quite how tight the final joint was. So um, for many situations, they had to be individually tested. But now you just get what's called chemical anchor. Uh, this is a, a two part glue. Um, it's a sort of mortar, really. Uh, so one part is in the center and the other part is around the outside. Uh, and the gun uh, pushes them both uh, separately. Uh, and then on the end, there's a nozzle, uh, just like with the epoxy glue um, that uh, does the mixing. So with these, you can drill much larger holes into the concrete, um, fill it up with the chemical anchor, and then you just push in uh, a length of studding um, and then you can bolt that to your steel structure and of course you can wiggle it around a bit while before it goes off to, to fit the steel. Uh, a huge improvement. I think probably the most successful plastic glues are ones called solvent glues that sort of melt the plastic so uh, the final join uh, is just the plastic there's no layer of glue in the middle so it's almost a sort of weld um, the actual little tubes of uh, polystyrene cement you got for old plastic construction kits that melted the plastic and formed this sort of joint uh, similarly with uh, perspex uh, this uh, glue called tensol uh, let's pour a bit out I think it's gone a bit solid but I think it'll still work then you can oops, make up the joint and uh, squidge it together a bit and then leave it. <laughs> uh, I've never been very good at glowing perspex. I can't do those perfect joints uh, that look completely clear. You can also glue PVC like that. Uh, builders use this for gluing plastic pipes together. Uh, I don't use many plastic pipes, um, but uh, it also glues foamed PVC uh, very successfully. And this glues much quicker than the Perspex glue, in my experience. And uh, it's, it's widely used for architectural models. This takes about a minute to go off. I made this Beverly Hills mansion for my celeb machine out of this stuff. You're a paparazzi flying a drone around, trying to spy on the stars. Overwhelmed to be awarded Best Actor, Best Director, Best Writer, Best Sound Recordist, Best Editor, Best Boy. This is a specialist glue I like called E6000. It's uh, sold for gluing rhinestones uh, onto things, but actually it's just a really super sticky version of silicon. So on the fulfillment center, all the different products are glued to the Perspex shelves with E6000. And then outside the arcade, um, the arrows, uh, the LEDs on the arrows have to be waterproof and the joints have to be waterproof. So I've just smothered the bits in between with gloopy bits of E6000 and they last very very well anyway that finally brings us to the end of the list of glues that i use in my workshop um many more different ones than i was expecting um i think you do just have to buy them and play with them and after a while you get to know which ones suit what you do i thought i'd end by talking a bit about ungluing um Today's synthetic glues are so strong, it's very often difficult to undo them, um, but it's often useful. Uh, and sometimes it is possible. Um, 
double-sided tapes uh, can actually be removed relatively well. Uh, this is the pair that I put together earlier. Uh, if you warm them up, You can then you try put something into top, prizing them apart. I actually put a new screen in a, an Apple laptop a couple of years ago by doing just that, prizing the surround of the screen off uh, with a heat gun and a palette knife. To enable their instruments to be repaired, uh, violin makers and also some fine furniture makers still use animal glue for their instruments. Uh, my friend uh, Bill has a, a damaged old violin uh, which he's volunteered to uh, unglue for us. The glue is basically the collagen from the animal skins, extracted by boiling them up in water. When hot the glue is runny, but when cold it sets hard, uh, but also brittle enough to crack open without damaging the wood when you're trying to get it undone. Actually, in this case, Bill also used some meths to soften the glue to help the process. Just wiggle it a bit more. Oh yes, way! It took about 20 minutes to get the lid off that violin. Um, you couldn't have done it if it had been glued with uh, waterproof PVA or with polyurethane glue without uh, splitting and damaging the wood. Of course, uh, in my arcade machines, it's essential to be able to take them all to bits for maintenance. So there's not much glue in them, really. Uh, it's most, they're mostly bolted together. And of course, in today's consumer appliances, it's the glue and the extensive use of plastic that makes them so difficult to repair. So I guess I'm back where I started. Glue can be completely amazing, but it can also equally be very frustrating.